Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today is uh, January uh, 16, uh, 2023 at 7.07 p.m. Uh, and this is the Land Use Committee for the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council. Um, the uh, committee members are uh, Gwen Flynn, Karen Schatz is listed as a committee member. However, uh, the last we checked, she has not completed the mandatory training, so she's not considered a board member. Jim Stein is here. Uh, Danica Middleton is here. Alan Nelson is also on the committee. How we, he have, however, he forwarded his uh, letter of resignation effective the 1st of January, so he's no longer a board member. So we um, actually have uh, three bona fide members and we have three here, okay. so congratulations. Um, and so we've got Gwen is here, uh, we've got uh, Jim Stein is here, and we've got uh, Danica Middleton. So we've met Quorum. Uh, and I'll just poll everybody. Jim, you did complete your uh, um, Land Use 101 training, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, Gwen, you also did a while back, correct? Yes. And uh, Danica, you did also? Yes. Uh huh. Perfect. Okay, so we're good to go. Uh, number four, discussion of possible action regarding the project at 16949-16955 West Sherman Way in uh, Lake Balboa. Uh, it's a 111 unit mixed use project. And that's where uh, Sizzlers used to be. Uh, so I am going to present Eric Lieberman of okay. Quest in, Incorporated. Um, actually, I got this huge packet, which I'll show you. It's really quite large from uh, land use, uh, actually Department of City Planning. However, it went to Reseda Neighborhood Council. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why the mix up happened, but Reseda contacted me and I went to uh, pick it up and here we are. So uh, if you'd like to, Eric, explain a little bit about uh, the project and perhaps uh, introduce your, your guests, that would be great. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Eric Lieberman. Uh, and I think under the new rules, uh, I'm a land use professional uh, I am supposed to disclose that I'm also registered with the city's ethics commission as a lobbyist uh, because I do a lot of this work. Um, the presentation part and the lobbying is a smaller part of my work. I do a lot of city, you know, uh, land planning kind of kind of things and coordination and project management. But because I do this activity, uh, I'm required to register. So I want to get that uh, out of the way. And I'm joined uh, tonight by the um, the project owner and applicant. Uh, Igish, why don't you introduce yourself for just one second? Hello, my name is Igish Kuyumjan, and I own the property on Sherman Way. It used to be a Sizzler property. And we like to do some development over there and uh, be, it's it's it will be nice project. I believe it's it's gonna be something good for neighborhood and for a city. Thank you, Igish. And then uh, Linda, our architect Aram Alajajian, he's apparently in the waiting room. If you can let him in. What's the last name? Alajajian, from Alajajian Marcuzzi Architects. I don't see that name. Can you raise your hand? Let me text him real quick. We'll see if he uh, is able to do that. Maybe there's some other identifier in his window. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because we don't uh, we don't do waiting room. Hmm. I see. Huh. Okay. I have somebody uh, named Dale. And there's a, a name, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the first name, but it's Hazra uh, Valerie. 
Welcome everybody. All right, well, I don't want to hold things up here. Uh, everybody's been kind enough to take their time out on uh, a Monday night and it's Martin Luther King night. So let's let's go ahead and get started and hopefully Aram can uh, figure out how to uh, identify himself so he can get in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share screen um, and I have a just a short presentation. This. OK, everybody see this PowerPoint? Yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> Let's see if I do this. Uh, correctly from beginning. There we go. OK. Um, so yeah, this is this site is uh, the one six nine four nine through one six nine five five Sherman Way. Uh, it's uh, just uh, west of Balboa. You're probably familiar with it. It's the old Sizzler site. Um, this perspective drawing, which I'll go to in a little more detail later, is looking at the corner um, Genesta and Sherman Way. So this is a zoning map. Um, of the site. The property is in, circled in this blue boundary uh, and it's split by two zones currently. There's commercial zone in the front facing Sherman Way and there's P zoning or public, uh, I'm sorry, parking zoning in the back on the north side. Uh, those existing zones consist of uh, the QC1-1BL uh, and an underlying CR1BL with P in the back. Um, the existing use is a restaurant building, as you know. And this illustrates in the yellow here, there's single family zoning and single family residential to the north, to the west. Eric, we're not seeing what you see. Oh, you yeah, not? you need to advance to the next screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that, are you seeing the slide part or? Do you see it now? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we're good now. Okay. Huh. For some reason, it's not. Okay. Anyway, well, let me start over then. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the subject site in this blue boundary area. And uh, it's commercial zoning in the front and P zoning in the back. Uh, it is the old Sizzler site. So there's a restaurant building here that will be removed. Um, this zoning map shows you've got single family R1 zoning here to the north of the property, to the west of the property, and to the southwest of the property. <clears throat> There's commercial across the street to the south, across Sherman Way, and uh, to the east of the subject site between the subject site and Balboa Boulevard, and a little bit of multifamily, which is this orangish color area here. Um, a little aerial view of it kind of shows the developed site as it currently is. And these little numbers correspond to the photographs I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna go through some photos of this existing area just to familiarize. And uh, if I go too fast, let me know, but I kind of wanna just breeze through it because I think you're all pretty familiar with it. Uh, so this is Sherman Way. This is the old Sizzler building. Uh, we're looking from across the street from the south. And that's the the, the whole of the subject site and its frontage on Sherman Way. Um, here, uh, just looking westerly on Sherman Way, gives you an idea of the existing improvements. This is the easterly property line looking from Sherman Way uh, with the existing uh, commercial building uh, to the east. And then looking from across Sherman Way from the south, the other angle, this is Genesta and Sherman Way. <clears throat> and then looking from the uh, northwest corner of Genesta and Sherman Way to you know, easterly, easterly view there. Uh, and then looking down Genesta, this is the, uh, the westerly boundary of the subject site. And then on Genesta, looking from the side or the, from the alley, I believe, of the between the single family homes um, towards the subject site, which is the back part, it's the parking lot more towards the north. 
and then along Cantlay. So the subject site, the north part of the subject site is here. This is the northerly boundary, Genesta and Cantlay Street, Cantlay being a, a dead end street. Oops. And then the other view here from the other corner across the street, this would be standing on the uh, north uh, east corner of Genesta and Cant Lake, looking south to the subject site. And then from the end of the east or the end of Genesta, standing in front of the very last single family home um, on Cant Lake, looking sort of in a southwesterly direction uh, across the parking lot. And then lastly, just at the end here, this is just looking down the easterly property line with the uh, with the subject site in, in the background there. So that's sort of the, what it looks like now. What we need to do in order to uh, accomplish what our goal is, uh, is a zone change, um, which would be from the QC1, 1VL, CR1VL, and P-1VL to a TQRAS4-1VL. Uh, this would be a measured JJJ compliant zone change, uh, which would require a portable set aside uh, and prevailing wages for construction workers. And in exchange for that, uh, there are two developer incentives that we are requesting. One is a reduction in the required LAMC parking to allow 160 resident, uh, residential automobile parking spaces in lieu of 198, which is in line with what it would be if it were a density bonus uh, for parking option one, I believe. Uh, and then relief from the general plan footnote number seven that would allow four stories in lieu of three stories. And to clarify on that, the, the height of the building um, at 45 feet um, would be allowed, whether it's four stories or three stories. Uh, what this four stories would do does allow us to do the additional units that is required uh, in order to accommodate the, 100, the 111 total units that's being proposed. Uh, it's not maxed out on density. There's 123 possible, uh, but to make it a uh, usable, efficient mix of one and two bedroom units, um, uh, the 111 is what is uh, necessary. And I'll go through that in a little bit more detail in a second. And then we have a site plan review because we're proposing more than 50 dwelling units. And we're asking for a waiver of dedication and improvements along Camp Lake. Uh, where the Bureau of Engineering is requesting a cul-de-sac improvement, which we think would not serve anything. There's no ingress or egress proposed in that uh, location. Uh, so we're asking that the city waive that. So essentially what we end up with is a 16,191 square foot mixed use apartment building, um, 110,000 uh, square feet is residential. There's 4,500 square feet of uh, ground floor retail facing uh, Sherman Way. And I'll show you that on our renderings. And the 111 residential units is made up of 92 market rate units, 13 uh, very low income units, and six extremely low income units. Uh, that set aside for affordable is what's required from Measure JJJ. Um, the building height of 48 feet and four stories, uh, which would also have two levels of subterranean parking, which would contain all of the 160 residential apartment uh, parking spaces and then the retail parking uh, as well. And the unit types break down like this. Um, we've got 64 two bedroom units. Uh, you can see there's a, a mix of those types of units, and there's 47 one-bedroom units. Uh, the one-bedrooms average about 712 square feet, and the two-bedroom units average about 1,091 square feet. So let's look at the fun part. This is uh, the pictures, uh, artist's interpretation or rendering of what the building would look like. Um, we're looking at 
the perspective from uh, the southwest corner. So if we were standing basically in the middle of Sherman Way and we were looking north easterly, this is the corner of Genesta and Sherman Way. Um, this area here is a lobby entrance for guests, guest entrance for the residential. Um, and this row of retail fronting on Sherman Way uh, would have individual access to the street as a typical um, retail component. Uh, this perspective would be from, this is Cantlay Street here in Genesta, this side. Um, the uh, main access is actually over here. I'll have a better view of it in a second. Um, but this shows um, some of the setback and landscaping. These stairwells here are pedestrian access points for the bottom units facing Cantlay. Uh, those were designed into the building at the direction of the planning department and at their suggestion. Um, initially, we didn't want to do that. Uh, but I would be interested in getting your feedback uh, on what you how you feel about that as well. Um, and then let's see, we'll go here. Oh, sorry. This is the uh, northerly side uh, lot line along Cantlay Street. You can see these are the pedestrian entrances for these units that, that I have referenced. Um, and you can see the building is designed to be you know, articulated in, you know, the best way possible with various colors and materials and uh, variation in, uh, you know, in elevation relief. And then the Sherman Way frontage, um, these are the retail shops facing Sherman Way with the, uh, with the units above in this particular location. And then lastly, a bird's eye view of what it would look like all of the vehicular traffic and circulation um, is from Genesta, which would be these two. There's an in and an out uh, through the parking garage uh, going forward. And uh, so that's it. That's what I, I wanted to show in uh, just in brief. And I think I'll stop there and answer questions. I do have a full set of plans available. I do want to put them all in here. It's a lot. Um, but happy to answer questions and open a discussion. Danica? On the roof there, was that like a swimming pool rec area with plants? On the roof, there's no swimming pool, but it is an open space area. Here, I'll go back to the, uh, I'll go back to it and as you can see it. Okay, do you see this? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, yes. so th this is a this is a roof deck area. Um, there's no swimming pool, but it's an open space area meant for, um, you know, open space, active open space recreational use. Okay, and then my other uh, thought is because four stories, how about air traffic flow in and out of Van Nuys Airport? Um, yeah, so the um, it hasn't been uh, analyzed, but um, it's well below the flight the flight path level. Um, yeah, we we're not going to run into a problem with that at all. Okay, and then initially the uh, planning had requested that you do improvements on um, Cantlay. What were those improvements and what was the decision behind trying to get the waiver? So on Cantlay here, you see this was originally planned, I think, as a cul-de-sac. Okay. Which will not ever be done because this is all developed already. This okay. part may be. Um, and what they wanted from us was a big bulb out here. Um, a big what? A, a big, like what I call a bulb out. In other words, it's going to be a partial cul-de-sac. Uh, it's just going to dip in here and really provide no utility value or meaning at all. In fact, it could create really some drainage issues or whatever. Okay. And given that we want to discourage vehicular traffic if we can anyway. Um, right. Here probably is not a good idea. So we're asking that it be waived. 
And what was their reasoning behind having you put in the um, pedestrian access to the back there? Well, the uh, planning department, the way they explained it to us here, uh, let me go back to that. Whoops. Nope. I imagine just for visitors who are visiting and parking there? It's for visitors and for those residents, but the planning department is very keyed into um, first principles on of land planning where they have eyes on the street. They want to activate the street for pedestrian use. Okay. And they feel that they feel that it it's safer. It creates uh, you know better eyes on the street for potential crime and that kind of thing. So they really are encouraging this kind of thing in the designs now. Okay. Um, and we were able to accommodate it because these are living spaces on the first floors, and it actually plays very well coming right off of the, uh, the living rooms. So. Okay, and then the materials on the exterior, I assume the white is stucco, and then is the upper brown, is that maybe vinyl siding or something that wouldn't need a lot of, I mean, because I know I love wood, but, you know, yeah. after a while, it's a lot of upkeep and it starts to look really nasty. Correct, yeah. No, it's not real wood. It's made to look like wood. It's okay. um, low maintenance, um, and I don't know if it's vinyl, but it probably is vinyl. Um Aram's not here to speak to that, but uh, yeah, I assure you it's it's going to be the low maintenance, high quality stuff. That okay, will these all be rentals or condominiums? These are rentals. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank Is you. there a reason why you're not doing condominiums just for income purposes? Just curious. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that if he just wanted to address that, he could, but I think that um, it's really not his business model. Um, okay. and, and also, and he can speak to this if he wants, but my understanding is this is a family portfolio. So this is going to be family, uh, you know, owned and maintained and long-term. So it's not, it's not a flip, right? So okay, it's a valuable thing. Anybody else uh, or Donica is any other questions? I was curious about the, the the rental rate or the, I guess, both the market rate units as well as the low income. Yeah, sure. Um, gosh, you know, I wish I was prepared with a little bit more detailed info on that. But um, the extremely low income units, I believe, are 30 to 40 percent of area median income, right? Um and I, you know, if you'd like, I can I can grab that off of the uh, LAHD's website and circulate it to you guys, so you can see what those numbers are. Um, I don't want to throw a number out there because I could be completely wrong, but I think a one bedroom unit is, you know, four or five hundred dollars a month. You know, it's it's that kind of level. Now the thing is, I don't know if you know how it works with this. Um, these tenants are they have to be qualified right they have to have employment they have to have income um they've they've got to have they've got to go through the regular background checks as a normal rental you know renter um and they go through lahd and the way that's facilitated is that there's a land use covenant that um, the landowner uh signs it's an agreement with uh, uh lahd on a 30-year um, deed restricted uh, process where that unit will be deed restricted for those income levels for that for the life of that covenant. And then what happens is uh, when they're renting these, they will screen those applicants, they'll qualify the applicants, and then they send them to LAHD for verification. And then LAHD registers them and approves them or doesn't approve them based on you know their status and so that's how it works and then every year lahd will do an inspection they'll make sure that the unit's being kept up properly they'll make sure that the um the you know the rents are being paid properly uh that the building is in good shape that you know that kind of thing and they do that annually and the applicant pays an annual fee for that so that's kind of in a nutshell how that works we have a question from aram 
Yeah, I, I, you can't hear me. I'm I'm just trying to get in there. You know, you can see my picture. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, we yes. can hear you. Our, oh, great, great. Yeah, no, I follow, uh, thank you, Eric. I follow the entire presentation there, and uh, and you did fantastic. Actually, you explained the project better than the architects do. <laughs> but I'm ready for any kind of question. You know, it's a uh, uh, one point that. Um, uh, we, we argued about that back entries, you know, from the small cul-de-sac street for the security purpose. And we didn't want the uh, uh, people to park there. If you have an entry, obviously you're going to have a car parking right in front of the curb line, right? So that was our argument with the city planning. But uh, apparently what Eric was saying is that's the justification that the planning came up with. They want more eyes towards the street. So... Uh, the recently, uh, the planning is entertaining this kind of an approach where you have your door opening right to the sidewalk, like you're in London, you know, but <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes, basically. Yeah, thank you. I, I have a, a question and a concern uh, with the possibility of 160 vehicles. Uh, when you come out of, uh, what is it, Genesta, uh, yes. onto Sherman Way, there's a, a right turn, but there's, you know, space for one car to turn left. Uh, I, I have a vision of a lot of accidents happening right there. Is mm. there going to be traffic control um, or, or what? Uh, because most of the traffic, I, I would assume, would be trying then to go uh, west on Sherman Way and the other traffic would be going through the community of single family homes. Hmm. Uh, no, that, that's a great question. Our environmental review is not complete yet, um, but I will definitely uh, look into that to see how that might be handled. Um, there's a median there, isn't there? Or is it broken there? You can actually- It's broken. It it's broken. When you're traveling east on Sherman Way, there's a cutout and I can sit there. And then when traffic is good, I can make a left turn by Sizzlers. Uh, and then it would be the same way going out of uh, Genesta. Uh, you can make, uh, you can go straight and then quickly make a left turn onto Sherman Way heading east. Right. Um, and that's going to be an, a major issue in my mind. Uh, I don't know if you can have another traffic light that that close to the Sherman Way Balboa traffic light, but that just seems like a huge problem. Um, Tom Riley's on now. He mentioned that previously he's seen uh, some plans for uh, a project. I don't know if it's this project where it was going to be a senior citizen facility. Was that your your uh, owner as well, or is that was that a different plan? That must have been a different plan, I think. Yeah, that was a different plan, uh, you know, and, and it was a different approach. Um, and uh, uh, to answer that uh, traffic question, currently we have a traffic and transportation engineer that the developer has hired. He's working alongside with the city traffic department, you know, and we are, we're waiting to see the report in, uh, in each, um, uh, you know, conjunction there. So uh, hopefully those things could be resolved and answered to you, Linda, you know, get you an answer for those areas. Yeah, there's, I just yeah. hesitate because there's a lot of, you know, 160 vehicles, let's just say, you know, a quarter of them go through the community. And my fear is that they're going to really zoom through the community and, and uh, the kids playing on the street, et cetera, is going to be a bit of a hazard. I wish there was another egress uh, that, that would, pour out into the commercial area as opposed to residential. Yeah, unfortunately, D LA DOT won't let us do a driveway access. Yeah, the... off of Sherman Way, because that then that would be more, uh, uh, you know, congestive and more mm -hmm. dangerous. But uh, imagine those uh, vehicles are not coming in or leaving the same time. You know, there's always an overlap, and especially some of it is designated for the commercial retail. So the commercial hours are really different from the uh, residents that are arriving after work, uh, you know, to their units or living for work, uh, you know, from their units. So commercial operations normally starts like eight or nine o'clock in the morning and ends like five or six o'clock, the retails. And, and that's I'm not, I'm not really concerned about the retail. That's minor. 
uh, and that would be the same that Sizzler had previously. So that, that to me is not a real consideration. Consideration for me are the families, uh, both the families that are living in the project and uh, the families that are in the single family homes surrounding it. Mm -hmm. uh, Danica? Um, I actually have this question, but it's also in the chat. Where is the parking for the retail component? Um, it's in the garage. It's in the garage. Uh, yeah, it's in the garage. So they would they would pull into the garage uh, to that first driveway off of Genesta uh, and would park down there. Yeah. So Actually, can I, I mean, my turn. <laughs> um, all right. If you're going to combine the residential as well as the uh, commercial parking, you're cutting down further, even you're cutting down even more than what the shortage of parking already will be in existence. No? Um, I'm not sure I understand your point. If we're, you mean if we're mixing the commercial and residential parking? Right. It's actually so, designated. Yeah. It's, a, it's actually, when you get into the garage, it's designated commercial parking. Residents can't park in the commercial and vice versa. Okay. Correct. And the residential, uh, to add to that, Eric, uh, the, res the residential area is gated, you know, right. so the, the residents will be entering through their own gate. And uh, so do uh, the, the retail area is completely different parking than the residential. It's not mixed together. It's right so, under the, the retail. Yeah. My question is, how many total number of parking spaces are going to exist? 178. How many are going to be retail? So there's 178 total. Um, and there are, so the mix, I think I have it on this other slide here. Um, here give me one second, I'll give you the answer to that. It is... One hundred and sixty uh, for the residential, and the remaining uh, are no. Eight. I'm sorry. So we, we got one hundred. There's, there's eighteen commercial spaces, um, and one hundred and seventy-eight cars provided. Yeah, so one sixty residential and 18 commercial how many total units in the building 111 there's 64 two bedrooms and 47 one bedrooms so basically you got one and a half you got one space for one and a half spaces per unit of which how many are two and three units or uh, two and three bedrooms there's no three bedrooms. There's 64 two bedrooms and 47 one bedrooms. Well, if you got 64 twos, that's 128. No? For I'm old. Math is not good. <laughs> you mean for parking? Yes. I'm sorry. I mean, it, right, right, but we're 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 that's not what we're proposing. We're we're proposing the one seventy eight, you know, as part of the developer incentive for Measure JJJ. That's that's how we're getting to that number. So, you know, we're doing one hundred and sixty. So, if you were to do two per unit, right, it would be two hundred and twenty two. Right, we're doing one hundred and seventy eight. So it's slightly, it's less than two per unit. It's like one in. 1.65 or something. The, the, the other, where are we going to put the other cars? You can't park on Sherman Way, and the community so, certainly is not going to be excited to have those extra cars sitting in the residential community. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's an age-old question, isn't it? And it, it comes up in, in all of these um, in all of these projects and has for years. Um, you know, this with, you know, full 
two two levels of subterranean parking, we can we can fit in that many. Um, and I, you know, I it, the the whole philosophy behind the planning commission's directive. Um, you know, we can debate for hours, and you know, there's viewpoints on both sides. Um, and I think the city's really trying to push people to get out of their cars um, and build less parking. You know, it's true, but we're not getting out. That's the problem. <laughs> I know. You I know, know, I mean, and those that are saying get out of your cars are are riding in cars. They're telling the rest of us to get out of our cars. Yeah. Are, are those are those uh, cars? Are those parking spaces actual car spaces, or are some of them bicycle spaces? No, those are actual car spaces. Uh, bicycle spaces are being provided in addition to that. So uh, the bicycle numbers. Let's see. There's there's eighty four parking spaces for bicycles. So. May I also ask what's the setback on on uh, Sherman Sherman Way? How how big is the setback? So the setback on Sherman Way is five feet. That's the commercial for the commercials uh, ground floor commercial facing uh, Sherman Way. It's five feet from the sidewalk or from the property line on Sherman Way. From the sidewalk to the to the property line. Yeah, and I. Uh, um the other question i had is uh you've you've told us how many how uh you've told us about the units whether they're one bedroom or two bedroom but how big are those units so the average one bedroom unit is 712 square feet and the average two bedroom unit is 1091 square feet I see. Um, uh, my other concern, of course, is um, unless I'm mistaken, uh, there's nothing above three stories tall uh, from in Lake Balboa from uh from balboa boulevard to white oak and can anybody correct me on that do that again nothing above three stories tall yet no not that i know of the only four-story building that i was able to see um was on sherman way east on the south side of the street east of balboa yeah and that's not going away um, I, I showed up late, traditionally. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, the, the 84 or 80 parking spaces for bicycles doesn't make any sense. And I know it's not you, nothing you would propose and you're just taking what the city throws at you. Um, so if it could be addressed, we can maybe knock out some of the bicycle park and put in car parking. The second thing is um, at the north end of the building, the windows for the second, third floor, uh, they're gonna open up to the properties across the street to the north, taking away their privacy. Well, those are front yards. So those single family homes. Well, when I'm on the easy. second story or the third story, the front yard is the same as the backyard. I can see their backyard. I'm taking away their privacy. How can we address that? I don't know. I, I maybe we can do some sort of a um, cross section with a site angle. The building set back 15 feet on Cantlay, um, so it's not right up on the property line. Um, so I don't know that the sight line, even from the fourth story, anybody's going to be able to see behind those houses. But we can we can do an analysis and see you know what that cross section and see what that sight line looks like. How many units are there on that part of the building per floor? Um, good question. That would be on that side of the building. 
my computer's loading a little slow, sorry. Um, and my, my age is not a problem. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on a second. It looks like, I believe, Aura, maybe you can correct me, but I think there's 20 units on that end of the building on each, on all, all, uh, each, all four. Yeah, there are five units. There are five units on, on, on that tail end that looking towards that uh, short right. street. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, well, five per, per floor. So they're a total of 20. Uh, uh, yeah. Of the five, one's on the west side, one's on the east side. So there's really three units in the middle. Yeah, there's only three units in the middle. You're absolutely correct. And there are more windows towards the uh, east and west side. So the, uh, they're inclined to more to use the east and west views rather than looking to the north. You know, those, those corner units I'm talking about. You know, then the mid units are three. So three times four, only 12 units, like 10% of the total project is only looking... Uh, and first floor obviously is exempt because you're 15 feet away and you have a large landscaping in front of it that gives you the full privacy. Your concern would be the second and up, second, third. So that leaves you uh, like only uh, three, uh, three times three, that's nine units that uh, could be effectively viewing towards the, uh, the neighbor's side. So. And then, right. and then, as Eric mentioned, you know, there, the setbacks of their, uh, of those homes are about 20 feet uh, to the garage. And after the garage comes to the building, you know, so there's, there's a quite a bit. And then you have also the street between them, which is about 50 feet right away, including the uh, sidewalks. So okay, well, yeah. The second story would not be a major concern one way or the other. Yeah. Um, no way. If I'm checking out the property across the street, it'd right. be the third and fourth story that would be of concern. So six what's the, yeah. what's the possibility of putting in windows on that side, the north side, that open from the bottom rather than doing slide windows or opening from the top so that the privacy would be maintained? Because what, what happens in, in my mind, which isn't too big, but what happens is um, not only do you take away the privacy, you are taking away the value of their property because anybody who's going to buy those houses will realize that they are not getting the privacy that presently exists. So my concern is that we're gonna punish the three or four owners on the north side with the lack or the loss of privacy. So how can we address that concern? Well, one of the ways uh, is to uh, kind of sandblast the, uh, have a sandblasted glass glazing, which not giving any view but it gives you the light inside of the, uh, the units mm -hmm. in a certain areas that prevents more of a, you know, you get the sunlight, but you don't get the, you go, don't get to see mm -hmm. out of it or in of it, you know? So that's one of the ways. And so, and it will be designed accordingly, you know, to uh, basically address that. Yeah. And we're talking like a middle and their, their windows and the balconies are moved. Yeah, those three units. Uh, on top, yeah, that's the, this is the one. Yeah. So this, I, I showed up late. Is this the back of the property? Yeah. 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 This is Cantley. This this is Cantley Street. Mm -hmm. So this would be the that northerly elevation of the building. So we we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve windows per floor. Oh, you got the porch out there. I'm sorry. But even so, this is the same thing. Um, so we roughly, roughly have 12. You could probably easily lose one per unit to a bathroom. Um, 
which well, if, easily open up to the top. If we did opaque or non-transparent balconies or some sort of clear story design on the windows, something like that, I don't know. We can, or we can look at that to see. Yeah, we can take a look at that. Bathrooms don't have any windows anyway because we are ventilating mechanically. There's no need for bathrooms to have a glazing, you know, looking outside or, you know, I mean, like, like the traditional ones, because now you have such a quiet Newton units we use it all the time. And it, it, it gives you the perfect ventilation inside the bathroom, you know, no steam, nothing. So we're, we're not intending to use any, any glazing inside the bathrooms. So that's accepted. Uh, but as Eric said, you know, we will study and see if we can uh, use a sandblasted glass, you know, to reduce the, uh, uh, the visionary uh, vi contact with the uh, outside of the building, but yet have the similar sunlight coming in, that would be one option to exercise, you know. I mean, I got to check with the city and make sure that um, uh, city building department and their building codes agree with that. The uh, community is, is supposed to be advised of this uh, new project. Has that already been done? What is it, like 500 feet or something that... that mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, that will happen when the public hearing is organized. We're, we're, a, we're a few months away from that. Um, they're sitting still finishing the environmental review. Um, so there's still a little time before that happens. But yes, a, a hearing notice will go out. And the process in this case, because it's a zone change, will be a hearing officer hearing first, which the hearing officer's function will be to take testimony from anybody who has concerns or input, and then formulate a uh, recommendation staff report to the planning commission. And then the planning commission will actually hold another hearing. They'll make a decision that gets referred to planning and land use management committee of city council. And then that's where the final decision essentially will be made, even though they act on behalf of city council, it will ultimately go to city council uh, just to confirm the planning and land use management's decision on the project. Um, and then it'll be done at that point. Right. So we got and a little, you're little, saying, little ways to go. And public hearing, you think it's a couple and months, two, three months away? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably about three months from, from now. Okay. So, are we, are we going to be notified of that, or are you going to send that to Reseda? <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> I want to claim that's not my fault, but I'm really curious what the tag on the envelope said, <laughs> because if it says Reseda, my staff's going to hear about it. So the city has approved the application. The but wait a second, I'll review unblur. with everybody. <laughs> Does it say Reseda, Linda? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll I'll unblur just a second. That's my fault, guys. Sorry. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the other question I had is, um, is there storage? What kind of storage is in there for people's extra stuff? You want to answer that, uh, Arm? Yeah, it's uh, every, I mean, the, uh, right above the parking spaces, there would be storage <laughs> from the ceiling. So each parking space will have its own storage box. In the parking, which would be locked by the owner, I mean by the tenant. So we're providing a, quite a bit of a storage space there. Do you know so, the dimensions, Aram? Yeah, it's a, it's a, normally it's by, uh, the car width, which is about nine feet, and the height is about four feet, nine by four by about two feet deep. Yeah. Okay. Danica, you had you your hand raised up. for a while. I did. So, I mean, the nine by four, um, and it's above the car. So it's not outside of the bike lock area. It's not really. No, no, it's not in the bike. bike okay. area. So my main question is, and um, so Eric, you might be able to, or Tom, you might be able to enlighten me on this one because I haven't researched it. I'm just kind of curious that these past couple of years with me attending land use meetings, that no one goes with apartment buildings, there's not a developer that has come up with plans that go deeper than two, two levels of subterranean. Why is it, is it a cost issue? And then my next to follow up with that is 
why not take the first level and make that additional parking so we can alleviate because the fact of the matter is Cantlay is going to be just littered with parked cars, absolute parked cars, and Genesta is going to get littered with parked cars. Um, I don't know, Aura, maybe you can speak to the cost. I know that it's very expensive to build parking. <laughs> very, very expensive. Exactly. It's basically, you know, you know, in our experience in the past many years is like additional parking would trigger uh, you know, uh, the water basin, which is pretty high in that area. Uh, it's more, uh, it's uh, more of a cost, cost issue, environmental issue, all of those will come in and come into play and basically will jeopardize a project like this and providing much needed housing for the community. Uh, right now, I mean, I don't know, I mean, you've been in the planning commission, you heard of that, but I, I heard it through the great lines that the state is thinking of reducing parkings more than what it's allowed right now. Yes, I heard that through uh, uh, through the state people that uh, yeah. connected with the city. Yeah, and especially you know for the for the retail and the commercial. Right now, they're going to go after the commercial. You can build a restaurant with no parking. Could you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. It's called the drive-through. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want uh, they want more of a like a food traffic, especially in a in a, the main arteries of the of the cities that carry the bus lanes and all of that, which we yeah. we are blessed to have that also on Sherman Way. Yeah. So that 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 kind of alleviates a lot of issues with the with the with the cars and parking and all of that. Because you know we have that in the many many cities right now, from Santa Monica to Burbank to mm -hmm. uh, you know LA, that uh, the you know the the new generation is more inclined to use Uber and a taxi. You know, I mean, especially if you're traveling further out. Uh, yeah, I the gas got so expensive. I rather not drive. I get a I get a Uber. You know, from here to Santa Monica, and it's fifteen dollars. If I put a gas and drive there and come back. I have to pay for parking and all of that issue. So, uh, you know, those things come to play and, and, it, and a state that makes a decision, they, they consider all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I, I understand that. So, and the bus lanes are right across from uh, some mm -hmm. of the projects that we do and that helps a lot too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, you've got the, the east-west bus and you've also got north-south bus. So I think Correct. the location is very good. Go I ahead. think. I think the project looks nice. Mm -hmm. um, the major difficulty I have is uh, number one is the egress uh, into the community and uh, the the traffic onto Sherman Way. Um, that's huge in my mind. Um, the other thing is again parking because the people will go nuts, absolutely nuts, because you may have renters that are Uber drivers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, may I say something? Please do. I, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you're considering doing something uh, with those windows uh, for, the, uh, for the existing residents on the north side. But there's one other thing. I, uh, I, I've driven around enough apartments to know, especially if some of these are going to be uh, um, uh, low rent, uh, and uh, there never seems to be enough space for people, even if you do give them the space uh, in the in the parking areas. Uh, people are going to load those uh, those um, uh, those uh, my mind uh, the uh, dumpster the what. Dumpster? No, 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 not the dumpster. Or, yeah, it, it, outside, outside of the apartment, where you step out to on the balcony. Oh, the balcony. They're going to load the balcony with 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 all yeah. kinds of stuff. Even though there's a lot of parking spaces, you'll find bicycles up there. You'll find stuff hanging out all over. Some people will put their dog up there and tie him down, and they'll bark all day. That's going to be that's going to be an issue, and I need to I need to speak to that. I hate to take away people's balcony. 
but well, there may be another reason, Aram, to look at doing something something that's not transparent on the balcony roof. Yeah, well, I I do agree with the opaque uh, solution of the balcony railing that prevents more of a you know uh, actually provides the uh, uh, privacy. Uh, balconies are also uh, a condition, and it's required by um, the state law to have balconies for those units. Uh, we can't basically scratch off the balconies and have people living in the boxes. Balconies are needed for fresh air and so forth. But I agree that opaque, especially looking at the north side, the opaque type of railing will prevent, uh, uh, you know, basically the view or people placing things in there. But mostly, the you know, it's controlled by the management. You know, you know when, when you uh, hand them the manual of rental, that should say that, no, nothing should be placed in the balcony, except your, uh, uh, you know, even some people, they're not allowed to put chairs in there, you know, uh, I, I, you know, some developers, I, uh, uh, because it, it does create a, create a hazard, you know, uh, unless you have a little kid that jumps on it and then that jumps out. So that is something that we all concern. And I agree. And it's a very good comment. And we will look into it. Yeah, that is a very good comment. We'll look into it. Any other questions or comments? I have one. No, you have to remember I don't have one. I always have two or three. <laughs> um, when I first saw this project about three or four years ago, um, there was at length discussion about making it uh, senior citizen facility, uh, which initially they were going to leave the restaurant there because the two tied nicely together because uh, the restaurant could feed the hundred, they would have to pay for it, obviously, the 111 or 110 units. Um, and it would make the place attractive because it had the local restaurant. And then we, the next time I saw it, we had got rid of the restaurant and it was just going to be a senior citizen facility. The senior citizen facility would be a great asset to Lake Balboa because um, number one, <laughs> we're getting old and we need a place to stay and we don't want to move. Uh, so having a facility within the community we grew up in and spent our time with would be fantastic. Second, um, it would take care of the traffic problem um, without any trouble because senior citizens tend to give up driving and so their parking spaces, et cetera, wouldn't be that bad. The traffic from the west and from the east would not be that bad. Um, it would be an asset to the um, retail centers around there because they could deliver to the people within the facility. Um, and it would, from every level, it would be an asset to the community. And, you know, either, either it's an asset or it's a detriment. And I'm not sure that an apartment complex is the right asset for the community, um, especially with the population aging as it is soon, 60 or older is going to be the largest percentage of people within the United States. Um, and so we should be addressing our interest and attention to them because they are the ones, unfortunately, I'm one of them, who will be in need of these type of facilities. And there certainly is not enough in Lake Balboa or any place around us. There's one down on Victory and I would be high pressed to find another one. Um, so it would be an asset to the community. It would be an asset to the businesses within the community. It would be the least offensive to the residents of the community. Uh, so I, I, I would like to ask you to go back to that initial plan or concept or presentation 
uh, and, and see how that would work out versus an apartment complex. Um, because in a co an apartment complex, yes, you have one bedroom and two bedroom, but that doesn't mean you have one person and two person in those bedrooms. Um, and you do run into low income, you do run into a problem with the safety of the community. Um, it, it, it's, I, I, I'm not sure how it would be an, an asset to like the Boa community or to that neighborhood as a whole. So if I could, I would ask you to go back to the senior citizen facility and I think you would get very strong support from the community for that. And that's so I leave it at that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> um, I'd like to make a comment. Please. So I am, I guess, struck by this project in that it is addressing our homeless population, of which, of course, everybody's heard in a crisis. Um, the fact that it is a, not only is it a mixed use project, it seems to be mixed income, which will be helpful to, you know, addressing this homeless crisis that we're in. And, and I know that there is some concerns about the number of parking spaces and, you know, the traffic, <coughs> but I think, I think Eric said it earlier that there is a push towards getting people out of their cars and using more public transportation, using more um, shared vehicles like Uber and Lyft. Um, and we are on our bus, bus lines that make it easier for people to, you know, I guess, get around town um, and not have, not be so dependent on cars. And I know it's going to take a while for that to happen, to, to change that behavior, including me, but I think that's <laughs> where we need to go. And, and this project seems to, to be in, in alignment with that, um, that direction. And so, and, and it looks good. I mean, I think that, you know, you're giving some thought to the appearance and, and making it uh, even pedestrian friendly because there are, you know, it's really close to some uh, commercial area there. And um, having the, the retail piece of it showing windows on um, the sidewalks, I mean, makes it a little bit um, more appealing and, and, and pedestrian. Um, I applaud the, the project. I mean, I, I really wish it wouldn't have to be four stories because of the sight line, but, um, on the whole, I, I think the uh, the project would add to this community, uh, and especially in helping us with this homeless problem. And there's Louise Park, which is just a block and a half away, or maybe two blocks, um, so that people that live there could uh, enjoy some green space as well. So I do agree with you, Gwen. I do think that uh, the location of the project is is in a good place. It's not going to disrupt uh, a whole lot of single family homes. Uh, the traffic is going to increase, um, and I'm just concerned about the safety of kids running across the street, et cetera. Uh, How is that going to work? Um, uh, and rush hour, and people do tend to, to get up and go around the same times, unfortunately. So I think the majority of traffic is going to be around the same time. So that that's a huge major concern for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure that'll come out at the town hall meeting. Um, if no one else has any questions or comments, um, I want to say thank you very much for coming and, and uh, showing us the uh, development uh, and listening to our concerns. Uh, it's too early for us to take any kind of vote until we we know what's happening with the community, um, but um, I will send you the correct address, Eric. <laughs> you can give us uh, some Thank update. You. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank Thanks. you. One good earthquake, and we're there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Uh, so if you have no other comments or we don't, uh, we thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you, Aram and Eric, for, for. Yeah, thank you for your time, Monica. Thank you. Yes. Thank and you. thank you, everybody, for taking the time out on a holiday. Thank you. Holiday evening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it better that we find out about it as quick as possible and then, uh, you know, mull it around uh, and, uh, you know, see what we can do and how we can uh, work together. We're not opposed to to development in our community. We're just trying to think outside the box for all the people concerned and how is it a benefit to our community? Uh, 100%. And yeah, thank you. And, and our takeaway. And, and, uh, thank you for listening. And uh, one more thing about senior citizen and uh, uh, JJJ uh, apartment unit. Uh, we, we like to do senior citizen too, uh, okay. units, but uh, because of city, these homeless issues, and they, they, they want to have uh, more people to stay and that's why we change it to uh, apartment building. Uh, but right. again, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to right. be continued, how's that? <laughs> continued and we have our homework. We're gonna look at the line side, the privacy issue and the and we'll get an answer on the traffic, see if anything's gonna be mitigated around that. So <laughs> we can circle back up, we'll, hopefully we'll have some answers. Well, you know, um, Dan, I think it was Danica mentioned something. So I'm just going to throw another question about the, the trash pickup. Uh, how would that work? Where, where would the trash pins be? Um, the trash cans are stored in the garage and taken out to the street on trash day. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question. <laughs> <laughs> Take there the trash go. out. Right. Yes. <laughs> And Hi, Tom Riley. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom, for helping me. No, uh, so we'll go on to item number five, which is public comments. Comments on public, uh, from public on non-agenda items and issues, announcements and complaints within the jurisdiction of the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council. It's limited to two minutes per speaker. Uh, board has discretion to comment or not. Any public comments? Public is quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> okay, very good. So then we're we're on number six, which is adjournment. So uh, I thank you, neighborhood council board members, for all your help that you do to the community. Uh, it is appreciated, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, election committee and also outreach. Uh, if you care to join us. So thank you so much. Good night, Good. everybody. Take care. Good night. Thank Good you. Good night. Good to see you, everybody. Good to see Hi, you, Tom. Tom. Really good to see you. <laughs> thank you. I miss, I miss you. <laughs> well, I miss all of you too. <laughs> hey, how come you weren't at my Hollywood at the holiday parade? How can I do what? How come